Hello? Okay. Um, so what uh, Federico Ricciutasenghi will uh, <coughs> tell you about is, um, is the statistical physics of uh, disorder systems, both uh, equilibrium and uh, non-equilibrium. And so what I wanted to do uh, with you today, and what we agreed with him, is that uh, we will uh, review some of uh, the basic stuff. In particular, uh, <coughs> statistical mechanics uh, of um, the easy model. Actually, even simpler, the mean field easy model. Okay, so uh, I imagine uh, most of you have uh, seen this. Uh, who have not seen the mean field easy model? No one? Okay. At least four people uh, have never seen the mean field easy model. Others have seen it, uh, but maybe uh, this will help us um, <coughs> to be on the same page on this uh, for this course. So what is the easy model? Well, the easy model is a model for a, um, a ferromagnet. Okay, so uh, we think of uh, a, a sample of a ferromagnet, and, uh, <coughs> and we think it being composed of atoms. Okay, and each atom uh, is, uh, is modeled uh, as a <coughs> with a magnetic moment that can be either up or down. Uh, so this is an extremely uh, simplified uh, uh, picture. So, uh, <coughs> so for each atom, so there are, uh, for each atom, we have a spin variable, sigma i, which can be either plus one or minus one, okay? And, uh, uh, and this i goes from one to n, it labels uh, the a atoms, the different atoms. The n atoms, usually it's over there uh, um, as proportional to the volume, okay? And, um, and so these are, uh, these are the, uh, the variables, the dynamical variables in our system, okay? And... Uh, <clears throat> uh, in order to discuss the physics uh, of uh, the system, we need to specify what is the uh, uh, <coughs> what is the energy or, or the Hamiltonian corresponding to any configuration C. By C, I will mean uh, a configuration uh, sigma one, sigma n of uh, spins. Okay. So C will label uh, uh, configurations. How many different configurations do I have? Two. Huh? Two, to two to the end. Okay. Very good. And so usually uh, this configuration, uh, uh, this, uh, this energy <coughs> is something that uh, um, uh, is written uh, in the following form. There is a, there is a uh, there is an interaction term which involves uh, nearest neighbors, and then uh, there is an external field uh, there is an external field which acts uh, on each uh, uh, on each spin okay this uh, sum here means that uh, this is a sum that runs on all the pairs i and j which are uh, nearest neighbors uh, uh, in uh, physical space okay now um, uh, um, okay so this happens to be uh, a very uh, difficult model to, uh, to study uh, this system. Uh, and it's mostly because, uh, because uh, uh, of the underlying structure of the interactions. So the fact that uh, 
the net, I mean, these interactions are over a, a three-dimensional lattice, in this case, and, uh, and this makes uh, calculation very hard, okay? So, <coughs> the, uh, the idea is, uh, uh, is to, to study, in, instead of this system, to study the uh, mean field uh, is in model, which uh, assigns to this uh, uh, um, to this uh, <coughs> same configuration an energy which is uh, which is just uh, this one. Okay, so the external field is the same. But uh, now this sum runs on all the pairs of uh, spins. Okay? It runs on all uh, i and on all j which are larger than i. Okay? And, uh, <coughs> and you, you may notice also that this uh, j has been uh, substituted with j divided by n. No? And this is because we want the, en the energy to be extensive, OK? So if you have uh, here, uh, so a sum over i of whatever, it's uh, expected to be something which is of order n. It's proportional to n, OK? Because you are summing over n terms, OK? A sum over i and j will be proportional to n squared, OK? So if you want this term to be of order n, you should divide by n, OK? So this is, uh, uh, this is the idea. If you don't do that, then uh, you will be in trouble when you take the limit uh, n going to infinity. And uh, we will see this, OK? So essentially, this is, uh, uh, <coughs> this is the problem uh, that we will study. We will study the property of a system, the statistical physics of a, of a system that has this uh, Hamiltonian. Yes? Sorry? You mean uh, this b should be n squared? So if this is n squared, then uh, this term will be of order 1, and this will be of order n, which is a problem. So this will outweigh this term. So in general, uh, if you, you can consider even a, a more, uh, say, uh, a complicated model, probably you will see this, uh, a p-spin model, OK, where the energy of a, of a configuration C is something like minus j divided by n to the p minus 1 sum over i1 less than i2 less than ip of a sigma i1 sigma i2 sigma ip minus h somewhere i uh, sigma i. OK? So probably you will uh, also see models of this type uh, in the course of uh, Federico uh, Richard and Singh. And, uh, and you see, in order to make uh, these two terms to be of the same order uh, in the thermodynamic limit, you need uh, to have n to the p minus 1 here. OK? Other questions? OK. Very good. So uh, <clears throat> what do we do with this, uh, with this energy? Well, uh, first of all, uh, let's see. Uh, <coughs> What is the ground state? Yeah. 
So if uh, <coughs> so, what is the uh, what is the configuration of uh, uh, minimal energy that minimizes uh, this energy? So the configuration that minimizes uh, the energy is clearly the configuration where all the spins are parallel. So this is equal to one for all the pairs. And all the spins are parallel uh, to the uh, sign of H, OK? So the uh, configuration of, uh, uh, of the ground state is one where, uh, uh, say, sigma i are all equal to, uh, say, plus 1, uh, sorry, the sign of H, OK? But this I mean that uh, uh, if uh, h is positive, this is plus 1. If h is negative, this is minus 1, OK? So this is uh, uh, if h is different from 0. And uh, what happens if h is equal to 0? Then I have two ground states, OK? Uh, for h equal to 0, there are uh, both uh, the, say, uh, C0 plus and minus are both ground states. So there are two ground states. OK? <coughs> and so <coughs> the opposite limit uh, as you will see, is the limit where, uh, say, the energy is maximal, or uh, uh, if you want, uh, uh, um, of infinite temperature. And that is the uh, situation where instead, uh, where uh, essentially, uh, <coughs> um, you don't care at all about the energy. You just pick uh, uh, a configuration at random. OK, so let's say the situation at t uh, temperature equal to infinity is a configuration where uh, you think uh, you consider a probability distribution uh, which is uniform over, uh, uh, which assigns the same probability to any configuration. OK. Then given this uh, probability distribution, uh, the, uh, the average energy, well, the average energy is, uh, is zero. Can you tell me a simple argument why it should be zero? A simple argument. A very simple argument why the energy should be zero. Why should it be positive? Yes. Sort of. Exactly. So um, <clears throat> if you think, uh, um, <clears throat> actually, the, the, the uh, argument is a little bit, uh, but yes, roughly because essentially for any up configuration, you have uh, 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 an equivalent down configuration. And, um, <clears throat> and so essentially, uh, since uh, uh, <coughs> you see, um, <clears throat> the sum of i less than j of sigma i, sigma j, this uh, can be written as uh, one half the sum of i and j, which go from 1 to n, of sigma i, sigma j. Right? So if I take the, the sum of uh, i and j that go from 1 to uh, n, both go from 1 to n, <coughs> I will have uh, twice, uh, I, I will have uh, uh, in this sum, there is the sum of i less than j uh, over i less than j. But there is also the sum over j less than i. 
and on top of that, uh, uh, there is also uh, <coughs> um, a term uh, which is uh, uh, with i equal to j. Okay, so if I take uh, this sum, I take out uh, all the terms where i are equal to j, then this is twice uh, the sum uh, over uh, 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 i less than j. Are you okay with this? Okay, now this guy, since i is equal to j, this is equal to 1. Okay. So this thing is uh, uh, j uh, is, uh, and this thing, uh, this guy here, is nothing that but uh, the sum over i from 1 to n of sigma i squared. Okay? Okay, so the sum over i and j, I can take uh, sigma, I can take the sum over i, sigma i, times the sum over j, sigma j, and uh, this is just the sum over i, uh, sigma i, squared. Okay? Very good. So, so you see now uh, the interesting fact of this Hamiltonian. That indeed uh, it can be written as uh, um, something like uh, <coughs> so if I call uh, um, yes uh, minus h sum over i when sigma i minus plus uh, j over 2. Okay? So it can be written just as a function of uh, uh, the magnetization. The magnetization is the sum over i of all the spins. Okay? And now, if all configurations uh, have uh, uh, equal probability of having uh, uh, um, um, uh, of having spins uh, up and down, okay? So we expect that the magnetization will be equal to zero. Okay? Yes, please. This one? Yes, but you're uh, writing the cover to, in the, in the right side, you're changing this to the, the sigma, sigma i uh, in the power of 2, right? right? Yes, here, well, uh, here essentially I'm writing, so I could write this uh, like this, okay? Okay? So the diagonal term uh, in this sum uh, is a sigma, sum over i sigma i squared. And sigma i squared is equal to 1. Ah. OK? And now uh, I had another question. This guy, this, this term, can be uh, positive or negative, but the term in that right-hand side, it could be just positive. It, are you changing ah, these? Um, uh, yes, so, so no, this, uh, okay, so you are saying this guy can be either positive or negative. And uh, whereas this one, apart from this uh, um, term here, can only be um, positive. And um, yes, no, that uh, tells you. Hmm? What? The left side couldn't be negative. This one? Uh, no, I think there's no problem because the... Uh, yeah, so, so the... the <coughs> so this fact, uh, this, uh, what this tells you is that uh, this term here is... Uh, um, 
plus n over 2 will be positive. It's positive. Okay? Typically, it is positive. Okay? Unless uh, the, this thing is uh, equal to 0, okay? Which is the magnetization is equal to 0. Okay? And um, yes. Are you convinced? Yeah, no? I, I Not really? I more about this. Huh? Yeah, I, I should just uh, imagine it. I cannot do it right now. <laughs> yes, so. Um, Yeah, so this is a sort of uh, sigma squared, essentially. So, so it's, it's, it's a squared object. So it is more, more positive than negative. Okay, okay so, um, so because of this property, so you expect that uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this state, uh, uh, the um, the expected value of the magnetization of this thing will be zero, and so uh, the expected so the, the expected value of the um, of the energy will essentially um, be typically zero, okay? Because uh, uh, these and these uh, are uh, zero. Um, <clears throat> Uh, of course, I mean there are these uh, uh, there are corrections to this, so this will be zero only uh, when n uh, goes to uh, infinity. Okay. So, um, so you see, uh, this is uh, the main uh, reason why one studies this problem because uh, you have two uh, different situations. So one situation where uh, if you take uh, uh, h equal to 0, you have uh, uh, two ground state. And one uh, where if you take, uh, uh, if, you, um, if you say, uh, take the opposite uh, situation where you don't care about the energy, or uh, say you take uh, uh, infinite temperature, you get uh, um, one single uh, uh, ground state. Okay, and so uh, the issue is uh, how you go from uh, this situation to this situation, so the, which is what uh, uh, <coughs> we are interested in. And there are two different ways of uh, uh, discussing this uh, system. One is uh, uh <coughs> if you think uh, this uh, physical system uh, as an isolated system, If it is an isolated system, that, uh, then uh, it does not exchange uh, heat with the environment. And then uh, uh, you uh, will study this uh, with the microcanonical. Otherwise, uh, you think of this as a, uh, say, as a system which is uh, in contact with a larger system or with the universe and is exchanging energy with this. So it is, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, say, a, a system uh, in equilibrium uh, with the environment. And then uh, you are going to use the uh, canonical ensemble. So do you remember, uh, well, I mean, everybody knows what is a canonical ensemble, what is a microcanonical ensemble, okay? So, uh, <coughs> so let's uh, <coughs> look at um, so in the microcanonical ensemble, 
what is the uh, important uh, quantity, thermodynamic quantity? What is the state function? Entropy. entropy. Okay, so what is the entropy? Let's say we have to study the entropy as a function of uh, energy, right? Because energy is fixed. Okay? Energy is, con is a constant of the motion, okay? So it's fixed. So now, if you uh, um, uh, look at uh, uh, this, uh, <coughs> this uh, equation here, so um, <coughs> what you see is that, uh, as we said, uh, this uh, energy is a function of uh, magnetization, okay? It's a function of uh, m squared minus h times m, where m is uh, uh, sum over i from 1 to n of sigma i. Okay, there is also the, fa the j over 2, but this factor j over 2 is going to be, in, uh, first is a constant, and so the energy, you don't care about constants in the energy. And second, it's also uh, sub-extensive in energy, so it's not extensive. So I'm going to neglect this in the rest, okay? Okay, so uh, <coughs> what we uh, <coughs> ask is what is... Uh, how, uh, so uh, what is the entropy? So, uh, 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 so what is the entropy of configurations uh, um, which have a certain value of m, okay? So this is uh, my function em, okay? Okay, so how many, how, so what I have to do in order to compute the, the entropy is uh, to compute the number, okay? The, uh, is the log of the number of configuration that have this particular energy here, okay? And uh, this is simple because essentially, so this is the log, the number of uh, configuration that have this particular uh, energy is, uh, so all, all configurations of this type will have uh, <coughs> n plus m over 2 sigma i, which are uh, plus 1, uh, n minus m over 2 uh, sigma i that are minus 1. Uh, doesn't matter how, I mean, any configuration where I choose uh, uh, n plus m over 2 uh, spins to be plus 1, and the rest is minus 1, will have this energy. Okay, so the number of configuration with this energy is n plus m over 2. Yes, it's n, choose n plus m over 2. Okay, very good. So, and uh, <coughs> so now if we said, uh, uh, if we say that uh, m is uh, uh, we introduce uh, lowercase m as uh, the um, average magnetization, or also the, the <coughs> magnetization per spin. And uh, if we use uh, a Stirling formula, which says that n factorial is essentially uh, e to the n times, uh, e to the minus n times n to the n times a constant which also, well, is, okay, which we neglect. So if we take uh, this approximation, then uh, uh, this becomes minus n times one minus m over two, let me, <coughs> log 1 minus m over 2 uh, minus 1 plus m over 2 log. Okay? 
Okay, so this is the microcanonical entropy, and uh, I will write this as uh, uh, n times uh, this uh, small, uh, let's say, use small s, okay, as a function of, but this is a function of uh, m in this case, okay. <clears throat> now, if you, so the, the energy for this configuration is written uh, here, so the energy density is written here, and uh, it is equal to minus j over 2m squared, and uh, minus h times m, okay? So this is the energy density. So <clears throat> so in the microcanonical uh, uh, description, what you have uh, is that uh, as a function of the entropy, you have the entropy. Okay. And so, um, you see, you can plot this uh, curve uh, parametrically. So when m is equal to zero, uh, this, um, the entropy is, um, is one half uh, log uh, one half minus one half log one, uh, one half. So it's equal to log two. And when m is equal to zero, uh, this is zero, okay? So you start from this point, and then uh, uh, <coughs> if h is equal to zero, then uh, you have just one, one curve, okay? One curve that goes, uh, uh, when m equal, uh, uh, goes to plus or minus one, you go to uh, minus j divided by two, and essentially you will follow something like a curve like this, okay? This is h equals zero. If h is not equal to zero, then uh, <coughs> you will end up in two points. One is minus j over two minus h, if you follow a branch where the magnetization has the same sign of h, if you follow a, a branch where uh, the magnetization has uh, uh, opposite sign to h, you will end up in minus j over 2 plus h, okay? And essentially, if you plot this function, you will get something like this, that again goes through this point, and then uh, does like this. So I have a red chalk, so I can do some artwork. Okay, so this is h different from zero. Okay? And now if you have uh, a certain uh, uh, energy, you will see that uh, <coughs> given the energy, if h is different from zero, you will have uh, uh, this particular uh, um, uh, this particular uh, entropy, and um, and uh, that's it. Okay, and uh, <coughs> so if you have. Uh, at high enough entropy, a uh, high enough uh, energy, you start having uh, two branches, okay? Which means uh, that uh, there is a state with higher entropy, which is the stable state, and it is a state of uh, lower entropy, which is a metastable state, okay? It's a, uh, it is, so they, they have, so, uh, <coughs> so the, the, 
just the number of configurations uh, which have uh, the, uh, which are here is much higher than the number of configurations which are uh, uh, here. Okay. And um, so, in, in this sense, uh, we say this is uh, the stable state because if we pick uh, a state at random then uh, it will uh, most likely, with probability 1, be here when n goes to infinity, OK? Still, there is this uh, metastable state. The other interesting thing uh, about uh, this, uh, uh, <coughs> this uh, <coughs> system in this particular, uh, this particular energy, is that um, if you look at uh, the uh, the configurations which have uh, uh, which have uh, this entropy and this entropy, these correspond to two different uh, values of the magnetization, which means that they correspond to uh, uh, configurations which are very far apart. So in order to, to go from one of these configurations to the other, you need to ch change uh, at least uh, a fraction of the spins. OK? So this means uh, that essentially, um, if you have your, uh, your uh, uh, we will discuss the dynamics, but if you have your picture of uh, the state of configurations, then uh, uh, this situation here corresponds to a situation where you have many, many configurations somewhere and few configurations somewhere else. And these two uh, set of configurations are disconnected, which means that uh, if you have a dynamics that starts uh, in one of these states and uh, that moves from one state to states which are uh, uh, close by, which are very similar, then you will never jump from uh, one state to set of states to the other, which means that you have ergodicity uh, breaking. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, say, uh, and, uh, I think a lot of uh, the work, uh, a lot of the course uh, uh, of Federico Tessigi will be about uh, uh, ergodicity breaking. Or, the, or studying systems uh, where uh, um, at a given energy, the configuration space uh, is divided into many, many minima or many, many uh, different connected sets and study the, the consequences of this. Okay. Okay, so uh, now if you uh, go to uh, the canonical ensemble instead, uh, so, of course, uh, <coughs> this picture uh, here that I just uh, erased, uh, we will discuss this later. Uh, so, no, let's discuss this later. Okay. Um, okay, so, uh, in the canonical ensemble instead, what we say is that a uh, um, system uh, is not uh, uh, isolated, but it is in contact uh, with uh, the, the external environment. Okay, and since it is uh, in contact with the external environment, it exchanges uh, heat, and so the energy is not fixed. But essentially, at the equilibrium the average energy will be fixed, OK? The expected value of the energy will be fixed, OK? So, uh, <clears throat> and this means uh, that essentially uh, uh, what matters uh, is uh, um, is uh, <coughs> so the description of this system 
will be one where every configuration C has a, a, a probability which is given by the Boltzmann distribution, OK? So where does this Boltzmann distribution come from? Huh? We can maximize the entropy. Yes, OK. So uh, <coughs> this comes from um, a, a calculation where uh, Essentially, uh, you say, well, the energy, this function here is uh, all that matters to these spins. Uh, everything else uh, is, uh, is not important. So essentially, what I will do is uh, I will look at uh, maximum energy, maximum entropy configuration, which has uh, uh, a given value of the expected energy, OK? And then uh, the solution of this problem uh, will, give you, will give you this probability distribution, OK? The other equivalent way of uh, seeing this is to say, OK, uh, let's say um, a priori all configurations are equally probable. Um, but uh, among this, uh, so I have a distribution uh, over the space of configuration. But I want to find out uh, that distribution that also satisfies the fact that the average energy must be fixed. It must be. And so this makes uh, uh, this is a large deviation problem. And if you solve this large deviation problem, you get this. OK? Very good. Now. Um, uh, so uh, the problem here is to uh, compute this uh, uh, partition function. In order to compute the partition function, you have to sum of all, all the configurations. Uh, it's just a normalization constant. OK. But what we have seen is that, uh, in the end, uh, this function only depends on uh, the, the magnetization, the energy. Only depends on the magnetization. So, so what I can do is to say, uh, let me sum over all configurations such that uh, the magnetization of this configuration is equal to m. And uh, let me sum over all values of m from minus n to n, uh, right, in steps of 2. Minus m, minus m. OK, so it's clear that the values, the possible values of the magnetization is minus m, minus m plus 2, minus n plus 4, et cetera, et cetera. OK, it's in step of 2, OK? And then uh, here I have e to the minus uh, is energy of m divided by t, OK? And uh, now, again, uh, what is this object here? This is just uh, the entropy, uh, the e to the entropy, OK? So it's just uh, uh, the sum m from minus n to n and choose n plus m over 2 e to the minus e over m, e of m divided by t. OK? Very good. And uh, now what you can do is to, <coughs> is to, um, essentially uh, go from uh, uh, the, the capital M to the lower case M. So and write this uh, as, uh, and you, you can turn uh, the, um, the sum over M into an integral 
from minus 1 to 1 in uh, lowercase m. Okay? And then uh, uh, here you will have e to the minus uh, uh, n times uh, a function of m divided by t. And this function of m uh, is, uh, is essentially the, what is called the free energy. And it's energy minus uh, t times uh, entropy. OK? So in the end, so uh, this f of m is uh, uh, what you read from here. It's minus j uh, over 2m squared minus h times m. And then uh, there is uh, uh, minus t times the entropy that I wrote before. OK? You remember the one minus 1, 1 minus m divided by 2 log 1 minus m divided by 2 minus 1 plus m over 2 log 1 plus m over 2. OK, so and uh, so and then uh, how <coughs> when you have uh, integrals of this type, we then uh, go into infinity. You do this by 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 you do it by subtle point, OK? So this is, uh, say, uh, you write it like this to say that uh, we only care about the exponential uh, terms. F of m star divided by t, where m star is such that uh, the derivative of f with respect to m at m star is equal to 0, OK? So let's take a break of uh, five minutes, uh, then uh, we'll, uh, we'll continue from here, OK? No, because uh, you go from one uh, from one uh, um, uh, from m equal to minus m to minus m plus two plus four plus eight, etc. Okay. So uh, <coughs> so this is uh, if uh, if n is very large, uh, the the difference uh, between. Uh, um, Yes, taking uh, essentially uh, this sum and um, uh, taking the integral from minus m uh, to, to n is essentially the same. Okay. And now if you make a further change of variable where uh, m is equal to big N times small m, then uh, you will get uh, this. Okay. So, I mean, the difference uh, between, uh, <coughs> so if you have a, a function, uh, then, uh, you know, the sum uh, will be uh, just uh, something like this, the area under this curve, and the integral will be the, just the, the integral, okay? So, so the, the, the difference, uh, if n is very, very large, then uh, uh, the, 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 the difference between the sum and the integral will be relatively very small. Okay. But you can, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, <coughs> let's go back to, to this object here. And now what we want to do is to study uh, <coughs> 
the behavior of this system. And uh, essentially, if you um, So if you take uh, this derivative and set it to zero, what you will find out is that your M star satisfies this equation. OK? And then uh, once uh, you have solved this equation, which is an implicit equation for M star, then uh, you plug it back here, and you have uh, uh, your uh, partition function. And given your partition function, you have uh, the probability distribution over uh, the, your uh, uh, configurations. So let's ask, uh, uh, what is the probability that uh, my that I will find a particular uh, value well, let's say, what is the probability, let me write it explicitly, what is the probability that uh, my magnetization <coughs> will be equal to uh, some value of m, okay? So in order to compute this probability, what you have to do is to sum uh, this uh, to sum over all configurations such that uh, the magnetization of uh, this uh, configuration is equal to n times small n. Okay, and then uh, uh, and then uh, you will have uh, the <coughs> the probability of these configurations. Okay, now we have seen that uh, so this uh, z is e to the minus n times uh, uh, f of n star divided by t. So this is uh, e to the n divided by t of uh, uh, f of m star. This is 1 over z. And then uh, what I have is uh, minus n divided by t times the energy, OK, which is uh, um, minus j over 2 m squared minus h times m, OK? And again, uh, this sum will give me e to the n times the entropy, OK? So in the end, uh, when you do this uh, uh, calculation, the leading term will be e to the uh, minus n over t times the free energy at m minus the free energy at m star. OK? Well, so this is the probability with which uh, you will see a particular value of the uh, magnetization. Sure. OK, now, uh, um, what is the uh, shape of this? Uh, um, so you see, if this difference uh, is finite, uh, then this probability is exponentially small in n. OK? So uh, this probability will be non-zero only when uh, f of m is equal to, is close to f of m star, or when m is, e is close to m star. OK? So what you can do is uh, you, you expand here f of m around f of m star. And uh, what you get is that. Uh, This is equal to uh, the first derivative at m star times m minus m star plus one half the second derivative of f at m star times m minus m star squared plus higher order terms, OK? Now, this by definition of m star, this is equal to 0. OK? By definition of m star, this is going to be equal to 0. So that uh, uh, what you have here is e to the minus n over t 
times uh, um, uh, one half um, see um, the second derivative of f m star m minus m star squared plus higher order terms. Okay, so now what you can do uh, for an exercise uh, is to compute this second uh, order derivative and to check that uh, it is negative. Okay? So this second order derivative is the uh, <coughs> um, um, <coughs> is related to uh, a susceptibility. And um, but you, you, can, uh, you, you can check that this is negative, okay? So what you get by this result is that uh, the distribution, so the, uh, <coughs> the magnetization is uh, essentially um, uh, this magnetization, 1 over n uh, is essentially a Gaussian variable with mean uh, uh, m star and uh, variance given by this object here, okay? And variance given by um, t divided by the absolute value of uh, d squared f dm squared at m star, okay? So what it means is that uh, the fluctuations, uh, so the, the fluctuations of this object uh, will be of order 1 over square root 10, okay? So it will, they will be very small. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, so what this means is that when n goes to infinity, the, the probability to find a magnetization which is different from m star will be essentially zero. Okay. Okay. So uh, maybe we should uh, stool out. Okay. The other important point uh, uh, which one has to make uh, in this respect. Uh, so essentially, if we go, if we think about uh, the. <coughs> If we think about the limit, uh, thermodynamic limit, uh, when n goes to infinity, essentially uh, the magnetization per spin does not fluctuate. It's just a constant, okay? Which is equal to m star and is given by the solution of that equation. Okay, so now... Uh, <coughs> So then uh, what we expect uh, is that this m star should be equal uh, to the average magnetization, right? Now, uh, <coughs> take the case uh, where uh, h is equal to 0. When h is equal to 0, essentially the probability distribution is symmetric uh, for positive uh, and negative magnetization, okay? So that uh, we expect uh, that this must be equal to 0, okay? Indeed, if you, uh, if you put h equal to 0 here, m star equal to 0 is a solution, okay? However, what happens uh, is that, uh, so, and actually, say, also, <clears throat> so if you take uh, the limit uh, as h goes to zero of uh, uh, the average magnetization, so by this I mean uh, uh, the expected value over this distribution, okay? And then uh, I take the limit. Uh, so if I take this limit uh, as h goes to zero of the average magnetization, this is going to be equal to zero for a finite system. And this is just because uh, uh, in a finite system, uh, I'm, 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 this is uh, <coughs> the, uh, 
This is thing is just the sum over all configurations of uh, one over uh, z uh, e to the minus energy of configuration divided by t times one over n sum over i sigma i. Okay, so this is what it is. Okay, and uh, since this part uh, is uh, symmetric for sigma going to minus sigma, and this part is anti-symmetric, this sum is equal to zero. Everything is, everybody is okay with this? Are you okay? Okay. Then, uh, then uh, okay, so for any finite system, uh, this is going to be equal to zero. Then uh, essentially also if you take the limit as n goes to infinity, then this is going to be equal to zero, okay? Now, however, what happens is that uh, if you take the limit uh, in the opposite order, things uh, 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 might be different, okay? So if you first take the limit uh, as n goes to infinity of the average magnetization, and then uh, take the limit as h goes to zero, then uh, uh, this may be different from zero, okay? So let's see why, okay? Okay, so when you take the limit uh, n uh, going to infinity, uh, we have seen that the magnetization just becomes a constant, which is m star, okay? So we have just to study m star as a function of h, okay? And m star is the solution of uh, that equation there. Let me do it graphically, okay? So on the uh, left-hand side, you just have uh, uh, m star. So I'm just plotting as a function of uh, m star uh, the uh, left-hand side and then the right-hand side. So let's take a, a small positive, uh, h positive, okay? Let's say that h goes to zero from the positive side, okay? So if h is positive, then uh, this function is something like this. Going to, uh, from, uh, sorry, uh, It should go uh, cross zero at some point here. Okay. So this uh, <laughs> when uh, <clears throat> so the hyperbolic tangent uh, will be equal to zero when uh, m star is equal to minus uh, h divided by j, right? Okay. So if h is positive, uh, this, uh, this function here is uh, displaced. Uh, okay, so this is the solution of that equation, okay? Now let's uh, now uh, think of what happens when uh, h goes to zero, okay? So when h goes to zero, essentially this curve moves uh, to the right, okay? So it will move... Uh, like this, then like this, etc., etc. When h is equal to zero, it will just pass through zero. Okay, so uh, you see that. Uh, um, so the corresponding solution will uh, converge to zero. Okay. Okay, so this is true if the slope of this function here. At, um, when it crosses the origin is less than one, okay? But if we have uh, another situation, let me redraw the thing. If we have another situation where uh, uh, where the curve is like this, uh, so uh, then uh, the solution will be up, up here, 
but if you uh, if you move uh, the curve uh, to the right, you see that uh, the the point will change very little, and at the end, uh, when uh, when uh, it uh, when uh, it uh, reaches uh, <coughs> h reaches zero, then uh, you will have an m star which is uh, uh, different from zero. Okay? So you see the solution of this equation when h goes to zero from a positive or I could have done uh, from the negative side. Actually, if I had done uh, from the negative side, uh, you would have guessed that uh, uh, the intersection would have been on this other side. Okay? So uh, um, what you get in this case is that uh, the limit when uh, h goes to 0 plus is uh, different, uh, different from 0. And this happens only when uh, uh, the derivative of this function in uh, um, uh, h equal to 0 and m star equal to 0 is larger than 1. So essentially it happens only when uh, uh, j divided by t uh, is, uh, is larger than 1. Or when t is less than uh, uh, a critical temperature which is equal to j. Okay? So in other words, if you uh, take um, so what you find out of this is that uh, uh, if uh, it's a function of uh, uh, <coughs> say um, what you can do is the following. So as a function of h, you can plot uh, m star, OK? So when m is positive, uh, you will find, uh, so this is uh, plus 1, this is minus 1, OK? When h is positive, you will find a curve that goes, uh, uh, sorry, as a function of uh, temperature, OK? So when h is positive, uh, you will find a curve that goes uh, from, uh, essentially 1 to uh, uh, essentially 0 when the temperature goes to infinity or from uh, uh, minus 1 to 0, okay? But if you take uh, the limit when h goes to 0, you, if you decrease uh, h, then this branch will not uh, converge to 0. So this will converge to 0. Uh, above a certain uh, TC. But the limit of this curve uh, will not be zero. It will be something like this. Okay? And, um, and this is uh, essentially, uh, this, this is what comes out of uh, solving uh, uh, that uh, equation. Okay? So taking uh, taking the limit in this order, okay? Now, wh what is the right, uh, yes, please. Sorry? Why we can't use this argument for the first limit of demand, claim that the first limit uh, is non-zero to uh, Why? Uh, because you see, uh, <coughs> So after uh, I have taken the limit uh, h goes to 0, uh, essentially the, this equation here is completely symmetric between m and minus m. So the only solution of this equation, uh, uh, say, uh, so the, um, OK. OK, so uh, <clears throat> 
So, so when you are here, what happens uh, to that solution, to that equation, is that uh, essentially you have uh, uh, three solutions. One, two, and three. Okay, sorry for my drawing. So you have three solutions, one, two, and three. Okay? So these are uh, different from zero. Uh, so this is, uh, let's, let's call it uh, uh, plus uh, m, uh, minus m, uh, and zero. Okay? So because the probability of this is equal to the probability of this in equilibrium, when h is equal to zero, then uh, if you take the average, uh, minus m plus m, then you get zero. Okay? So this is why uh, you get uh, this result. For any finite m, n, you get that this limit will give you zero, because the probability of the positive magnetization is equal to the probability of the negative magnetization. Okay? Now, if you take... Uh, um, However, if, if uh, n is very, very large, then, uh, uh, and if your h is not zero but is positive, one of these two states, say if h is positive, the state with uh, uh, m positive will be exponentially more probable than the other one. Okay? So, for any positive uh, h, uh, for any positive h, uh, this limit will uh, give uh, zero weight uh, to this solution, and will give weight equal to one to this. Okay, so the probability is different. Okay, so it's a it's a different calculation. Okay. And, uh, and actually, so, so physically, what happens is uh, it's, it's very interesting because essentially, so <clears throat> uh, it's like you have, a, this is what you see also physically, so you, you have a ferromagnetic system, you polarize it into one, dire into one direction, okay? So uh, this is a spontaneous magnetization, okay? So... <clears throat> it's a finite system. In the end, uh, uh, I mean, it's a finite sample, okay? So you are not in this situation here. You are in this situation here, okay? So what happens is that, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, so the, um, your finite sample, if you wait long enough and you take an average long enough, then uh, the magnetization should be zero. So what will happen is that at some point uh, it will spontaneously uh, remagnetize in the opposite, op opposite direction. So probably, say, maybe the time you have to wait for this to happen may be longer than the time of the universe, but it will happen, okay? So, and actually we will see this when uh, we will discuss, uh, uh, we will discuss uh, the dynamics, uh, that essentially much of the phenomenology that uh, you are going to see in this course has to do with the fact that the uh, system may get trapped into metastable states, uh, into states um, which are, may not be equilibrium state, uh, for a very, very long time, for a time which is uh, practically infinite. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> so the mean field is model is the uh, say simplest uh, say uh, example where you have this uh, 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 phenomenon of s a spontaneous symmetry breaking. And uh, okay, um, there are other uh, uh, quite interesting. Uh, uh, things I want to recall about uh, this solution. And uh, you will receive uh, lecture notes on this part. But uh, 
One thing which is uh, interesting to notice is that uh, essentially uh, because this is an uh, because this is a um, um, is a mean field model. Uh, what you have is that. Uh, So you, you can compute these objects, which is the, um, the correlation between two spins. And uh, so, and uh, since uh, the, so in the limit when n goes to infinity, the, the probability distribution only depends on the average magnetization. Um, then uh, uh, effectively the correlation between these two uh, between two spins is very weak is of order one over n because it goes through how much uh, sigma j changes the average magnetization the pro uh, which, which determines the probability of sigma i so and the change uh, when you change just one spin is one over n okay so essentially what you will find is that uh, The limit uh, as n uh, as n goes to infinity of uh, this correlation is equal to essentially the um, uh, m star squared, which is essentially equal to the average of sigma i times the average of sigma j. So spins essentially in this uh, mean field uh, uh, easy model behave as independent. Okay, so this is a particular feature of uh, mean field models, and um, which is not true for finite dimensional systems uh, where uh, instead the correlation may decay uh, um, with distance. The other interesting thing is uh, that uh, you can characterize uh, uh, the, this point here, which is called the critical point. And uh, there is a lot of uh, interesting uh, features that happen uh, at the critical point. And, um, and these are related to uh, uh, the singularity that... Uh, Uh, emerges uh, at this point. In particular, you can ask yourself uh, uh, what is the magnetization uh, uh, as a function of t when you are close to this point here. And um, so this magnetization is... Uh, and how do you find this? Well, uh, essentially... Uh, you have uh, to take uh, this equation here uh, of okay so you take this equation here and you uh, and you consider that if you are close to this point uh, then uh, m star is is small it's very small so You can expand uh, this. Uh, uh, you can expand a hyperbolic tangent uh, uh, in powers. Okay, so the first term will be J M divided by T. Then uh, you will have uh, uh, a cube term. Then you will have a fifth order term. So you do this. Uh, please do this exercise. And uh, what you will check is that uh, essentially, if you are uh, at uh, t larger than tc is equal to, uh, to zero. If you are at t less than tc, then uh, this is equal to uh, square root of uh, tc minus t, uh, 3 tc minus t divided by t, if t is less than, uh, than tc. Okay? So which means... Uh, That the magnetization as a square root singularity it goes to zero as a square root is not is not uh, uh, you see this function here is not differentiable 
at uh, uh, Tc. Okay? So the derivative goes to infinity, which means that there is a singularity. And uh, also, uh, what you can, uh, what I told you is that, uh, <coughs> say, the, the fluctuations of the average mag magnetization are Gaussian, which means they are of order uh, uh, one over square root uh, n. But if you are precisely at this point, uh, this is no longer true. You can uh, repeat the calculation that we have done and check that when you are precisely at Tc, in the expansion, uh, uh, the exponential probability, so you, you compute this probability uh, that we computed, that 1 over n So what you will see is that uh, this is uh, no longer, uh, uh, so I remind you, we computed this as e to the uh, minus n over t f of m minus f of m star. So when you add a tc, the first order term here is not a quadratic term, but it's a quartic term. So this is, will be proportional to e to the minus uh, n over uh, times a constant times m to the fourth, OK? This tells you that the typical fluctuation, the average magnetization of order n to the one-fourth, OK? And, um, and n to the minus one-fourth, OK? So the, 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 the fluctuations uh, in, uh, in the total magnetization will be of order n to the 3 fourth. It's much, you have much more fluctuations at the critical point than uh, away from the critical point. Okay, so these anomalous fluctuations are uh, um, essentially uh, at the heart of this uh, uh, non-trivial behavior of uh, systems uh, at uh, the critical point. Okay, so I think uh, it's uh, way beyond the time to stop. So, I hope it was not uh, too uh, simple for all of you. Any question?